My question to Steph and Kara is, why did you sign up for marriage at first sight if you knew that you were not flexible, if you knew that you wanted a ready-made husband? Because with mouths, you will have to put in work. And the fact that you're not willing to put in work or compromise, then you you need to go home and go and go on dating apps and find yourself the husband that you think you deserve because there's no point in terrorizing these husbands. And I'm here for James. James is amazing. And the fact that he was able to do all this and charm his wife and her family family was oh my god anyway hey there thanks for stopping by it's your girl valerie welcome to my channel if you're new here don't forget to subscribe click the like button turn on the notification bell for when i upload new videos and definitely leave a comment in this episode i'll be reviewing married at first sight new zealand season 4 episode 13. Do the producers want airtime they need to cover the airtime because otherwise if they send period pay and Steph home then they've only got two couples to film and actually the two couples is only one couple that actually seem to like like one another so it's sad that Piripi has to continue with this because Steph does not value him. She does not appreciate him because even when she came to his brewery and he was trying to explain everything, the audacity to say, well, everything is just going in one ear and coming out the other. It's like, why are you here then? Why are you here? At least appreciate this man that he is trying to make ends meet. He's trying to support his family. And so value that how would you feel if he came to your workplace and he did the same you'd be up in arms so why are we treating his job as though it's nothing it's not like he's just sitting there doing nothing at least he's doing something productive with himself at least he's got an income stream at least he's thinking of going to school if you cannot value him there's a woman down the street who will and then michael meeting up with kara's dad we all knew it was going to be painful we all knew it was going to be painful because we all know his opinion about the show and the concept of the show he believes that the show is just there for ratings and it's not for people to actually find love but american show would beg to differ because there are couples that have been married even though the new zealand one i think we saw the the couple that's been married uh, I think they're from season one or something. Yes, people do. If you go in with the right intentions, you do find your one and you do actually make it work. And so maybe before he starts criticizing his son-in-law to be, he needs to look at what his daughter has been doing and saying, and then maybe that might humble him. The fact that she brought a male friend to each their own, to each their own. The friend said he wasn't impressed because he, he could tell that she wasn't attracted to him. And it's like, you don't need to tell us. She's told us multiple times. So you don't need to tell us that, you know, she's not attracted to this guy. She's already told us she's not attracted to him. So this is not news for us. It's news for you. But for us, it's not news. It's something we're used to and something we've heard countless times. So we are ready to move on to the next, you know, relationships if there is a season five. Oh my God, James, James, James. So you have, you know, James and Sam go to James's, you know, town where he, where he's been living while he's been in uh, in New Zealand. I was about to say Australia. And so to see her play cricket and want to learn the sport that he loves, the sport that brought him to New Zealand and then to sit down with his friends. His friends really liked her. They really liked her. You could tell they were smitten. And she, for the way she looks, she's surprisingly easy to get along with. Apparently there's custody issues. So I assume because of her child's dad, she has to stay where she is at the moment. Initially, she said it was because of the school, but I think it's there's more to it than that. Um, and so to see the friends really accept her and really welcome her. And she was right to say, you know, I feel guilty because then I'm going to be taking your, him away from you. And if it doesn't work after he's left somewhere, he's, you know, he's been comfortable, he's been happy, he's had his family there, his family that he found. Yeah, it's right for her to feel some type of way. It's right for her to feel guilty. And it's right for her to sort of acknowledge that. I have the sense of guilt because I worry that am I taking him from everything he knows? And if they don't work, then this is where the guilt will actually be worse. So I get where they're coming from and I get the family, the friends, or I was about to say family, the friends, yeah, they are his family actually, being very supportive of him in this situation and his decision and his choices. Yeah, they did sort of joke that you need to speak to the club, which he does need to because at the end of the day, he needs to sort of relocate and to a different island because they're going to be on different islands according to him that was cute and then Kara here is my thoughts on Kara I used to question every time she complained that so-and-so is dimming my light is dimming my light Kara wants to be in the spotlight and she doesn't have that 
thing that je ne sais quoi, that thing that makes it shine, that makes it, you know, be the center of attention. And because she doesn't have that, she tries to bring other people down or she tries to criticize other people or guilt other people into feeling less than so she can shine instead of her being comfortable in her own skin and being able to shine as she is. Because the dad and the friend were, were actually praising Mike and say, oh, he comes across as a great guy. He comes across as this. And for her to complain and start saying, oh, well, he's told me that I have eczema because of unresolved issues. And it's like, if he told you that, how come you've never said it on camera? Why are you still fighting with him about him not being here for the right reasons? That would have got you public sympathy because you can't control your eczema. And so him saying that about you would have made people feel some type of way and people sort of rally around you. And so I don't buy what she's saying, sadly. I don't buy she wants to play nice, nice. I wonder what the dad will think. And the fact that she had the audacity to say he doesn't show any emotion. And it's like we were there. We watched you, the way you behaved when you was crying and you was feeling sad. And you were saying that, oh, you feel like it's an act and it's just putting it on just for the cameras. So please sit down somewhere. We don't have the time or the patience to put up with whatever you're trying to sell to us because we have already seen what we've seen. Yes, we know it's an edit, but at the end of the day, the way you came across uncaring and unemotional and kept eating your pancakes while this man was breaking down. Please sit down. I'm not here for it. And James, oh, he's sweet. I don't know whether this was another, you know, product placement because he went to buy jewelry for Sam because he said he wants to buy her something to show her that even if they are living on different islands, he's still thinking of her. And he's like, oh, could he be any cuter? I can't love Piri P more. The, if that I do at the moment, I, I'll be heartbroken <laughs> if he doesn't turn out to be the guy I've seen on TV because I really love him. I really love him. And the fact that he introduced Steph to his mom and his brother was amazing. His family came and showed up for him, which I, I, I commend. And he seemed very happy to have them there. The fact that his mom fell in love with Steph was amazing for him but then sadly she is not yet buying into piripi steph has gold in her hand in piripi and she doesn't recognize that and she doesn't realize that this man is ready for her to mold him into the husband that she wants him to be he's not trying to be michael trying to teach his wife what she wants what he wants her to do he is there he's willing to do the work he is patient he's caring he's compassionate he's empathetic and she is finding fault in that and it's like seriously this man has his own brewery where he makes his own beers this man is going back to school to better himself you say you want three children he's already got two for you so you only need to go to be pregnant once what else do you want from this man what else do you want his mom seemed very calm and very peaceful even his brother and so the fact that she approved and even when his mom sat down with Piripi and had a conversation she was ecstatic because she really liked Steph she really liked Steph and she was very impressed by Steph it's sad that Steph is still not seeing this man the way that that she should see him and is more focused on people like Michael when she actually has gold in her hand and she doesn't recognize it I don't get it you had James he went to meet up with Sam's mom dad and sister and that was cute because she could have easily have brought him to where she lives and met you know had him meet her friend but instead she went to the people that mattered the most and so the fact that he's a teacher it was a tick tick for the dad and you could tell the dad really liked him even the mom really liked him because he comes across as very caring and the fact that his daughter just molds into this man and is just so comfortable and it's so effortless uh, it was cute to see the dad when he sat down and they were like they're worried about the visa yes it is a problem because the visa is their issue one the fact that you know there's custody issues and she can't move from where she is is another thing so for that to be their only problem, that's something that's fixable. That's something that's doable. Whereas if she, he was being horrible to his daughter or he was being malicious or vindictive to his daughter, that's something you cannot fix. That's something you cannot get over as a parent. So I am happy that, you know, their problem is something that can easily be fixed. The dad, the audacity to say, I hope he's ready to be the number three man in your life. I was counting my fingers and I'm like, well, her son is number one. Who's number two? And then I went, I think he's the dad. And then the dad said, well, 
you're sending me and it's like oh my god oh my god but i love it i love it i think james would settle very well into this family i think he would settle very well into this family and he wouldn't be a problem so i love that for him um steph i don't get why she made him meet you know her friend is it because she's not very serious about this guy why Piripi is an amazing guy and I love the fact that Steph's friend made her recognize that you don't always need to have your own biological children. You can also be an amazing step parent because it seems the the friend married someone who had his own child. And for her to tell, you know, Steph that you're complaining that, you know, he's younger than you by three years. My, my partner is 12 years older than me. And it's like all her points, all Steph's reasons for not liking Piripi or for having issues with Piripi can easily be swiped away with one argument. So I don't get why she keeps trying to sort of turn away from this guy. This guy is amazing, amazing. And she's going to cry the day she loses him. I am here for my sister giving smoke to Kara because Kara has been trying to play a victim. She's been trying to pretend like, you know, Mike is the fault or the one at fault in this relationship. This is why they are not working. So for the sister to sort of call her out because she did try and sort of tell Kara about their upbringing and how one of their sisters was very poorly as a child. And so they spent a lot of time in hospital and Mike was always trying to make her happy. And I think this is why he's always trying to look for the positive side of life because he's seen the worst when his sister struggled with her health and so for Kara not to ask questions about that I love the fact that the sister said Are you saying Mike doesn't have layers Mike has layers anyone in his life knows he has layers have you tried to look for the layers have you tried to be a safe space to allow him to sort of reveal those layers to you and at the end of the day have you asked him about himself as a child oh well every time I ask him I find I, I was here I was cheering I am happy that the sister called Kara out and showed her that I'm not here for your BS I'm not buying whatever you're trying to sell it's either you like my brother or you don't after all you have A B C D E F G in common so do you like him or don't if you don't leave him alone and i'm here for that i'm here for that i couldn't be more proud of the sister because she really held it down for her brother because she thought you're not going to play my brother on tv and make him look like an idiot i'm going to show you out and so that i loved i loved the fact that mike also took her to the gym and was sort of exercising with her just to release the tension and just be at ease and so I can see something. I don't know whether I'm the only one who can say it, but Mike is a totally different man to the man who entered the experiment, in my opinion. He's a totally different man. He's just, he looks like he's worn out. He looks like he's worn out and he can't wait for this to finish. I don't think he's seeing the value in being on the show anymore. I think it's taking a lot from the producers begging him to stay. That's why he's actually staying, in my opinion. I really wish someone had asked Kara or even Steph what they were looking for in a husband or why they came into the experiment because I don't think they know why. I think they came there to be influencers. That's my that's my opinion because at the end of the day, you can't tell me that there's always something wrong with the guys, but there's nothing wrong with them. The fact that they have the nerve to continue to criticize these men and continue to find fault in them, I don't get. The fact that you have, you know, Kara complaining. Well, she didn't complain per se, but she sort of acknowledged that, oh, your sister was right, that maybe I didn't see the layers in you because I didn't go looking for them. I think it's because she's trying to salvage her image and she knows she's come across as very hard on Mike. And so she's trying to be a goody two shoes and sort of make up for whatever his sister called out on her on. And so try and change the public's opinion of her. That's my opinion because she's never said anything positive about, about this man. She's always found fault with this guy, irregardless of what he did or what he said, because even her telling her par her dad that, you know, he said my ex as, as a result of my trauma, she was trying to sort of turn her family against him and not give them enough reason, you know, to question why she didn't make her marriage work. And it's a pity that she didn't see the value in sort of having Michael as a partner. The same can be said for Steph. I don't get Steph as well because she keeps going on about this man. Oh, you know, I, uh, him and, you know, he's still very immature. I want to have children. I want to this, that and the other. Well, go to Tinder, love. Go to Tinder. If Tinder is not giving you what you want, go to a spam bank and get a donor and life will move on. Otherwise, don't continue to stress this poor boy out. He's tried his best to be the man that you want him to be. You are not satisfied. It is what it is. Let's move on. I really feel sorry for Piripi and I never thought I'd feel sorry for 
for Michael, but I actually feel sorry for Michael because Michael is a shadow of his former self. And I hope he says no on on final vows because he doesn't deserve this. No one should change themselves to suit somebody's idea of a partner. You shouldn't lose yourself just because you want to be married. And so for Michael to continue to make all the necessary changes to win this woman over and yet struggle to win her over doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. And so I hope he chooses himself. I hope Piripi chooses himself as well. And these women can go back and sort of, you know, chill at home and hopefully find their life partner. Because at this point, this is not it. Whatever they're doing or saying is not it. And I can't stand and I can't understand why the producers feel it's appropriate to continue to have these men sort of stripped down by their wives. Because if the husbands were doing exactly the same thing that the wives are doing, people would be up in arms. People would be protesting that how dare they, you know, disrespect their 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 wives. But because it's the g girls doing it, everybody's okay with it. And I'm not buying it. I really hate it. And I really, oh my God, I can't even start. Anyway, thanks guys for watching. Please don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And click the link in my video to watch my review from episode 12. Bye guys.